Hello friends, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to deal about the third part of the nuclear physics. Let us continue. See, I am going to begin the today's session with a question that says a nuclear reaction is given as following A plus B will give you C plus D. Now here A and B are reactants while C and D are the product. Now the binding energy of A, B, C and D are given as follows. Following are the binding energies which I am writing here. These are the binding energies for respective. See, binding energy for A is given to be B1, B2, B3 and B4. Now, we have to find the energy which is released in the reaction. The energy released in the reaction we have to tell. See now, this is the reaction A plus B is going to give you C plus D. Now, the binding energy for the following are B1, for this is B2, for this is B3 and B4. The energy released, very very simple, see, the energy released is B3 plus B4 minus B1 plus B2. That means this one is the binding energy of product we can say and this one is the binding energy of the reactant. When we will subtract the binding energy of product with that of binding energy of reactant then we can easily find the energy released. Now we have a very important topic whose heading is variation of binding energy per nucleon with that of mass number. See. I'm going to make a graph here. Now see. The variation will be somewhat like this. First of all, it will rise. Then it will reach its peak and will further settle down. And this one is binding energy per nucleon and this one is atomic num uh, mass number. See, the maximum binding energy per nucleon maximum, the maximum value of binding energy per nucleon is 8.8 .8 mega electron volt. This one is 8.8 .8 mega electron volt near about and the highest, the highest for this is iron which is having a mass number of 56. So the highest here lies for iron basically. Now, let me tell you orally some of the important points that binding energy per nucleon first increases on an average and reaches a maximum value as I have told you that a value of 8.8 .8 mega electron volts that is for iron basically. Now for still heavier nuclei, binding energy per nucleon slowly decreases. That means for uh, if the nuclei is even heavier than that of iron, then the binding energy per nucleon will decrease as you can see here in this graph. Now the heavier nuclei being unstable have tendency to split into medium nuclei and this process is called as nuclear fission. The nuclear, the lighter nuclei being unstable have the tendency to fuse into a medium sized nucleus and this process is called as the nuclear fusion. Now after dealing with the nuclear fission and nuclear fusions definitions, let us see some 
important points about radioactivity let us start the topic radioactivity now see in this radioactivity first of all the term radioactivity was discovered by henry becquerel now see first of all what is rad uh, radioactivity the spontaneous emission of radiations now see under radiations alpha beta and gamma the spontaneous emission of radiations that is alpha beta and gamma from unstable nucleus is called as radioactivity and the substance which shows radioactivity are known as the radioactive substance in radioactive decay and unstable nuclei emits an alpha particle or beta particle and after the emission of an alpha or beta particle the remaining nucleus may emit the gamma particle and get converted into more stable nucleus now this is the point which has to be noted that after the emission of an alpha or beta particle only the gamma particle will be emitted this has to be understood and if the gamma particle gets emitted then the nucleus will become more stable now let me tell you or uh, let me give you an introduction about the alpha beta and under beta the beta positive beta negative particles first of all let us see the alpha particle see what is an alpha particle a uh, doubly charged a uh, doubly charged helium nucleus is considered to be an alpha particle and as i have told you in the previous video that an alpha particle consists of two protons plus two neutrons now an important fact the mass of in which many of you must be having confusion as well that the mass of an alpha particle is four times that of the mass of proton while the charge of an alpha particle is twice as that of the mass of electron or proton i can write it like this as well now after discussing the alpha particle we have the beta particle now see this beta particle is divided into two that is beta negative particle and beta positive particle first of all let me tell you about the beta negative particle this beta negative particle is also called as electron now see the mass of beta negative particle is equivalent to mass of electron and also the charge of beta negative particle is also equivalent to the charge of an electron now after beta negative particle let us deal with that of beta positive particle now this beta positive particle is represented by beta positive or e positive and this is also called as the positron this is also called as the positron the mass of beta positive particle is equal to that of mass of electron and the charge of beta positive particle is equal to the charge of plus here you can see there is a plus sign plus e now also an important statement that the positron which i told you right now that positron is considered to be an anti particle the positron is considered to be an anti particle of electron the positron is considered to be an anti particle of electron now what is an anti particle let us see what is an anti particle just a second right now see what is an anti particle now a particle is called as anti particle of the other if on collision if on collision 
both can destroy if on collision both can destroy completely and get converted into energy then it is called as an anti particle of each other such as let me give you an example first example that positron is an anti particle of electron let me give you an another example that the neutrino that the neutrino is also an anti particle of anti neutrino now see neutrino is represented by this sign while anti neutrino is represented by this sign understood now let us see about the gamma particle see the gamma particle now gamma particle they are considered to be the energetic they are considered to be the energetic photons of energy they are considered to be the energetic photons of energy of order of of order of nearly mega electron volts and an important statement that they have rest mass equals to zero that the gamma particles have a rest mass equals to zero now in the next video we will continue with the displacement law or the radioactive law and also about the alpha decay beta decay and the gamma decay thank you